Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Maggie and welcome to this final reading from the Power of the Praying Wife Illuminated. If you do not have Stormy O'Mardian's full book, The Power of the Praying Wife, I highly recommend that you get it. The chapters are very easy. They're just one or two pages, each little section with uh, scripture helps and everything else. This really provides you with wonderful structure that not only helps you to focus your prayers for your husband, but it also causes personal insight and reflection on yourself that you also need to be mindful of these things. Now, our final chapter is praying about his future. What should I do when I'm afraid of the future? Our life is an up and down journey. It seems something always challenges us and we have to deal with whatever that is. We pray and pray for God to get us through each difficulty. At least we should be doing that. And then when things are going well and life is good and we have overcome the last struggle and we have relief from the latest storm and the pain is better and we are not crying as much and the bills are paid and no one is mad and there is peace in our heart then we may be tempted to stop praying and seeking God the way we did. Just be honest, okay? Just be honest. We know our flesh has this pattern. We run to God for rescue. When things go well, we tend to slack off because we're not sure what to pray for. We have to cultivate our personal relationship with the Lord. So our time with him isn't just about rescue me, rescue me, help me, help me. There's more to time with him than just that. And that is a development of your prayer life. Okay, moving on. We might think that we are finally at the mountaintop where we belong and we will always be there. But that's a dangerous time. Just know this. When you read the Old Testament, you can see that was exactly what the Israelites did. They would seek God fervently when times were terrible. And then when things were going well, they would forget about God and all that he had done for them and go back to living the way they wanted to. We can all be like that. If we're honest, those old habits are waiting in the wings for us to just run back into them. The key is to be aware of this danger and seek God just as consistently when things are going well as when they are going badly. <clears throat> that comes in the cultivating of your personal relationship with him. You might have something that's gripped your attention. You're going through a difficult trial. We've been praying very fervently for our country, for all the evil things that are rising up against it to, to take away the very foundations of this nation. And when God writes things, as he said he will do, and he always does what he says he will do, and righteousness is restored, and everything is the way God wants it to be in our nation, how are we going to pray then? We need a relationship with the Lord and the discernment from his Holy Spirit so we know how to focus our prayers. Not just, oh, great, everything's good. I can just go on my merry way. There's nothing else to pray for here. No, we continually pray because God has work and purpose for us. And there are people who need to hear the gospel. They need the hope of eternity spoken into them. They need life spoken over them. <clears throat> I'm sure you have loved ones that aren't living for the Lord. They need to see and know that God is good and they need to see the fruit of that at work in your life, genuine. Now that doesn't mean you gotta be perfect, but they need to see the genuine transforming power of the Holy Spirit at work in your life. That you're not still doing the same things you did, you just now added Jesus to your mouth to say, oh yeah, I believe in Jesus, I found Jesus, but you've done nothing to change anything in your life. You haven't allowed, you don't do the changing, God does the changing. So you haven't allowed the Holy Spirit to transform you. And transformation begins in your soul, in your spirit, in your mind. And then the things you used to do, you no longer desire to do. See? Okay. That's why we must be careful to always seek God in worship, prayer, and in his word. <coughs> <coughs> These things remind us of who he is and who we are in relationship with him. Then when dire predictions come down from the world about our future and things around us start getting dark and scary, 
as they've been for the last three, four years, we can say in the face of that, Lord, I believe what you said in your word about my future. You are my light and I need no other. Our words to remember. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. I has not seen nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love them, who love him. Sorry. He loves us. We can't even conceive of what he has for us. He wants us blessed in this life, our future in this life. The next scripture is Jeremiah 29, 11. This, I tell you guys this all the time. I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you hope in a future. I don't know what version that is, but he wants to prosper and to not harm and to give you hope in a future. Prosper. No harm. And hope in a future. God wants us to be blessed in this life. That doesn't necessarily mean millionaires. He wants us blessed in this life. But most of what we're going to get as co-heirs with Christ happens after we die. That's what we have not con conception of. We can't conceive everything that he has for us. And he created each of us with a purpose. Without vision, the people perish. Okay, we have to have a vision of what God wants us to do and to know the purpose for which he created us and to know that God has good things for us in the future, not bad things. That's the vision we need to not lose sight of. <clears throat> Proverbs 23, verse 18. Surely there is hereafter, and your hope will not be cut off. God's a good God. Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 through 7. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith. God is good. He's good and faithful. Let's pray. Lord, I worship you because you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. You don't change with the times. You are eternal, and your laws and ways are always right. I praise you for directing me in the way that I should go. I'm grateful that you lead me into my future day by day, not only in this life, but into eternity as well. I recognize that you are my future and I can find everything I need for my future by seeking you today. Thank you that your light in me will never go out because you are light. I pray for my husband's future to be secure and that our future together will be good and lasting. Help him understand that you are his future and if he walks closely with you, he will move into that future you save, you have for him. Enable him to recognize that the strength he needs for the future is found in you and he can stand strong to face whatever comes because you will show yourself strong in his weakness. Enable him to see that even in what could be a dark time in his life, your light will shine brightly and never go out. Draw him to spend time with you and receive guidance for each day. Show him how you will give him everything he needs to walk into his future. I pray he will be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that his labor is not in vain. When he lives for you, Lord, I know his future is secure. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, God bless you and thank you again for stopping by my channel. I hope you've enjoyed that series. If this is the first one you've seen, go back and look at some of the others. And of course, check out some of the other content on my channel. Thank you again. God bless you and bye until next time.